oh, uh, this is really cool. I've got a real live famous uh, air personality, uh, John DeBella. Right? Hi. Hi. And How's it going, can, Billy? Uh, How's it going, Billy? Uh, Billy, uh, Bobby. Billy's my cousin. Oh, okay. Right. But, but that's okay. I've been called worse. Um, All right. But, but uh, you do, you work on WMGK. That's right? correct. And they call that magic, right? No, not anymore. They haven't done that in a long time. They don't, what do they call that? No, they call it WMGK. Okay, that's yeah. good. Okay, because I'm always- It hasn't been called magic for over uh, 20 years, Benny. Okay, um, okay, good. <laughs> Again, Billy and Benny, I like this. This is funny. So <laughs> anyway, no, because I am always confused when people give, when radio stations give themselves names, and, but they spell them differently. Because you know, uh -huh. human is my second language, not my first. I see. I see. Oh. Well, I, well, I have to tell. I have to tell you, Bernie. For a bear, <laughs> be very good English. Well, that's very good. Thanks. I love the different names. That's awesome. Um, so, uh, my my personal assistant Roger, my personal assistant uh -huh. Roger, said that you gave him his big break, and uh -huh. he said I should talk to you uh, to get a tip uh, or tips on and uh, how to have a, a career last a long time because you you've had a a career last a long time. So, what what do you what advice do you got? Um, probably, uh, I gotta tell you, Benji, I mean, when it really comes down to it, uh, I could sum it up in four words. Okay. Ro roll with the changes. Roll with the changes. That's great advice. As, or, or, as, as the industry or the craft or, uh, whatever it is you might do changes, uh -huh. you've got to adapt to those changes. Because the one thing I've seen over the years is a number of, especially in radio, disc jockeys who are trying to hold on to a type of radio that not only people aren't doing anymore, but people aren't interested anymore. Right, that's right. You know, you know, it, 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 there, was, there was an early 60s hippie type radio uh -huh. that was very good and very laid back and very right. easy, you know, easy right. going. Right. right. But people grew up. Uh -huh. And younger people did not adapt to that style. That so sense. as as the audience ages and the younger ones come up, you've got to make sure that you're talking to everybody, right. not just that one group that you started out with. That's right, because those that group that you start out with, they eventually die. Yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> right, right now, right now, my prime audience is 25 to 54 years old, uh -huh. but we have a huge audience. That's 55 plus. I mean, I've got listeners who are in their 60s and their 70s. I've got listeners in their 80s. When those people go out and buy a refrigerator, that's the last refrigerator they're ever going to have. That's right. That's, they're, they're not coming back for more refrigerators. <laughs> so, they're, not, they're not getting quarts of milk. They're just getting pints. That, that's it. Might that's, as well. Not, Don't want to expire. Not a dozen eggs, just six eggs. No that's need to eggs, right? Right. You can so, always get more. So what, what, what mistake do you think people make when they try to go into any type of show business? Because you've been around show business forever. So what, what mistake do they make? Uh, I, I think the biggest mistake they make is well, probably trying to force themselves into things that they're really not prepared for. Mm -hmm. Everybody has this idea of what it is that they can do. And I'm not saying that they don't have a talent or they don't have... Uh, Bobby, I got to tell you something. There's two white dots in your eyes, and they're driving me crazy. I know, I know. It's good lighting. It helps bring out my eyes. eyes. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. But but people go into the, and they think that like, okay, I'm ready. I studied. I'm going to be a star. Right. And it's not that way. Right. Because you, you studied. You you went to Hofstra, right? Yeah, I went to Hofstra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I didn't. I didn't study radio. I worked at the radio station, but right, I didn't. Study. Right. But My degree say, is in scenic lighting and costume design. I was that comes say, in yeah. real handy in radio. Yeah, no, exactly. Because you gotta have you gotta have the right costumes when you hit the radio. That's stage. it. When you hit it, you don't want to be dressed poorly on the radio. And you you've done thousands of interviews over the years. I just got I'm I'm just wrapping up my first hundred and one, and it's kind of fun. But you've done thousands, and you've done rock stars, uh -huh. and, uh, actors, and actresses, and 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 uh, comedians. What what's been what what's your Fondest memory of an interview that you've done? Uh, fondest memory of an interview, it, it, that's the easiest one to answer. Uh, Pete Towns in 1993. Okay. Uh, all right, Pete came, uh, Pete came to the studio after a concert. Uh -huh. uh, um, as he was walking in the door, and this is the who had broken up at that time. Right. right? 
he's walking in the door, he sees me, and he realizes that he has done interviews with me at least five or six times before. Uh-huh. You know, my name may my name may uh, may not have popped up for him, right. right? But as soon as he sees me, he recognizes me and literally looks at me and goes, "This is going to be a good interview." Because I can only imagine at that time, everybody who talked to him was really basically, "When's the Who getting back together?" That's right. That's right. That's right you know, that's right. and he that's knew right. that I was going to ask him stuff that was going to be beyond that. Right. I thought I was going to talk to him for an hour. This interview started at about. 11.30, 11.45 at night, because it was after his concert, and I had to be on the air the next day. Oh, wow. So uh, he came in, and uh, it went on for two and a half hours. Wow, that's and, fantastic. And at that point, you know, I said to him, I said, well, that's great, thank you so much. And he goes, I can talk more. And I'm like, Pete, I, I don't have any more questions. I've asked you two and a half hours. That's great. I'm done. Then you have to start, you have to start pulling out SAT questions. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You've run out. That's fantastic. Who was your first interview? Who was my first interview? Oh, God. You know what? I, I, in all honesty, I can remember what a lot of the early ones were, uh-huh. but I, I, I don't think I could ever pin down who the very first one was. Uh, it might have been Soupy Sales. Oh, wow. Soupy was fun, huh? Yeah, he was great. He was a great guy. Right. You know, there was, there was uh, Joan Jett was one of the first rock stars. I, I was going to say, I thought that Joan Jett, well, you were one of the first people to interview Joan Jett. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, and uh, she showed up in the studio and tore my pants off of me. Wow. Um, That's yeah. good. Yeah. Right. good uh, by, by the way, uh, by the way, Bernie, are you wearing pants? I've got pants. I've got pants. That's right. Okay. I want to make sure because I only see this head of yours. So. I know, I know. I try to do it. It's, it's a good camera angle. I'm small. This makes me look bigger. I and, see. And then, um, what about um, comedians? What was your, who was your favorite comedian to interview? Ooh, well, for the longest time, it was Bobcat Goldthwait. Yeah, he's great. Right. Yeah, Bobcat used to come in the studio, and uh, basically the interview went like this: Bobcat Goldthwait's here, and then wow. I wait to. Ten minutes, and I go. We'll be back with Bob. Ah, God, Bob would just talk. Yeah, right? yeah he would just go right? stab and talk. Right, just that. Uh, but, but nowadays, it's uh, it's a comedian named Bob Marley, uh-huh. just like the reggae singer, right? Except he's not. Oh, right? that's funny. He's a stand-up comic, and he is hands down one. Of, he is the funniest person that has ever ever walked into my studio. All right, uh, he's he stops by at least once a year. I go to his shows and it takes everything in my power not to scream out, stop, stop, please stop, because he's so funny you're actually in pain that the muscles in your neck lock up, right? Because the guy is so damn funny. Oh, uh, that's funny. That's, that's good. And then um, what, what would you say would be, uh, who was the worst? Ooh, well, the original worst was, uh, and y- your friend probably knows this, uh, Freddie. Uh, the, the, the original worst was Sandra Bernhardt. Oh yeah. She wasn't that good. No, 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 that, that wasn't, that wasn't good at all. It was the first time I actually saw my skin try to leave my body in the middle of an interview. Right. Uh, she was followed up by John Paul Jones of Led Zeppelin Uh because John Paul Jones went for a, a long period of time after Led Zeppelin broke up a very angry man. Right. Right. Because he did all the arranging on the Led Zeppelin songs. But everybody, he was always number four. He was never number two, number one. It was yeah, Plant, yeah. Page, you know, Bonzo, and right. then that bass player. Yeah, right? that's right. So he he had a he 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 was really cranky. Nowadays he's not. Right. But most English people, especially men, especially famous English people, right. go through a very cranky period, uh, either as their career is weaning or just age. They hit a certain point and they get cranky as all hell. And then they come back and they start being nice again. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, uh, oh, most crap. recently, though. Oh, 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 what the hell is that? I got to go. But uh, say whoever that last one was. 